In this video, I'll show you how you can publish your Adobe Captivate project for XAPI. I got a message from one of my members of my YouTube channel. You can become a member of my YouTube channel by clicking on the Join button that you might see on your page. Uh, Anya sent me a message asking about XAPI. Her organization is looking at a new learning management system and she's going to have to publish her old Adobe Captivate projects as XAPI projects. She also wants to learn about how to set up her projects so that they scale for different size browsers as needed. Let's take a look at that today. Okay, so I have my project set up right here. This is a project I'm going to publish to XAPI. You're going to choose Publish and Publish to Computer. And this opens up the Publish to Computer window that you see here. Uh, scalable HTML content is something I do a lot of times because, of course, I never know what size device someone might be using to consume my e-learning. So by selecting scalable HTML content, regardless of the size project you have, whether it's 1024 by 627 or 1470 by 900, it will shrink and grow depending on the size browser that the e-learning is being consumed in. So all you need to do is select this checkbox when you're publishing. Now onto XAPI, we're gonna click on the more button in the bottom left-hand corner of the publish to my computer window, and we'll go down to e-learning output. Currently it's disabled, but we'll go ahead and click on that, and that will open up our preferences window to the reporting section. And we're going to enable reporting for this project. You can see here, I've already got the standard of XAPI selected. This is done from this drop down selector here. The choices are SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, AICC, which is used by the aviation industry, and of course, XAPI. Once you've got XAPI selected, you can click on the configure button, and this will allow you to pre fill out your course ID and the title of the course. I like to go in here anyway, even if I don't have a course ID, and fill in respect in the workplace. And of course, you could also provide a description as well. If this is the first version of the course, you would type in 1.0, or you could increment this, of course, if this is an update to the original course. You could choose to put in the duration, and any keywords separated by commas, if you wish. This creates your manifest file when you publish your course, and your learning management system will typically scrape the information from this file and pre-populate it in the LMS. Now, from there, we need to look at two things, completion criteria and success criteria. Some people get these two confused, but the difference is what determines completing a course whether you're successful or not is not part of that. And then success, of course, is what is considered proficient. So in the case of completion, what does it take for someone to complete this course? I usually make these both the same. So in this case, you are considered complete if you've passed the quiz, and I would uncheck slide views, but you are also considered successful if you've also past the course. The two are the same for me, but you could use any combination of these that makes sense for your organization. I always select interaction data. This will allow you to run reports in your learning management system to see what answers to quiz questions learners have selected. This is a great way not only to evaluate your learners, but to evaluate the course itself and see if it's effective at teaching the concepts that are covered in the quiz. Down here under advanced, you can select that. And optionally, you can select not to send resume data. What this does is if the learner exits the course early and then comes back to it, say the following day, they would start from the beginning again. If you leave it unchecked as it is here, 
they will return to the spot in the course where they left off. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I can click OK here. So now I'm ready to publish. I've set this up for XAPI and I've got my course set up to be scalable. So I'm just simply going to click on the Publish button at the bottom of the Publish to My Computer window. And that's it. Publish completed successfully. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we can minimize our project here and you can see that we have a Respect in the Workplace zip file. You can either upload this to the learning management system yourself or you can pass it over to your LMS administrator to do that administrative work for you. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.